Hi, it's Nikki here from Happy Hormones for Life. And today on the podcast and the videos, I've got the lovely Dr. Elizabeth Phillips. Now she is a brain box. She's a clinical neuroscientist and functional medicine practitioner specializing in phytocannabinoids. Have I said that right, Elizabeth? You have. Perfect. Good. I was worried about that. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to talk to me. I'm fascinated by this because I don't know huge amounts about it. So I'm going to be learning as much as everyone else on this call. <laughs> Tell us first a little bit about your background and why you've specialised in this new area of research. Yeah, of course. So um, I trained, well, it's 20 years ago this year, I realised that I completed my PhD in uh, in brain research. And, and it was in particular looking at um, pathways in the brain that die. Um, so neurodegeneration, so die during Alzheimer's disease and dementias. So I've always had a huge fascination in brain health and, and health overall. But then my own health kind of took a bit of a, a knock um, with chronic fatigue syndrome, not long after actually, I got my, my PhD and uh, when I was working in the research area. So I then became really interested in lifestyle medicine or functional medicine um, and so sort of understanding how you know you can use lifestyle diet you know managing stress managing your environment to really you know help your health so that kind of set me on the path of not only brain research and brain health but also understanding that whole sort of aspect of lifestyle medicine and the reason I got into the uh, the phytocannabinoid or, or CBD area if you like and that also incorporates medicinal cannabis as well is that I was very aware about sort of two and a half, three years ago, you know, CBD oil was beginning to really ramp up. And, you know, sort of as a practitioner, I was sort of thinking, you know, what's what's going on? You know, why haven't we really heard of this or considered it before? And I just became really, really fascinated and not only saw the absolute potential, but also began to see real clinical results as well, um, both actually for myself and family. You know, I like to test myself on these things, um, but also then, you know, within the clinical setting as well. And why and how does CBD CBD work and medicinal cannabis work in the body and it's this endocannabinoid system as you said and the reason that that's so interesting I hope people find this is we've only known about it for 30 years which is ridiculous when you think about you know the brain the gut the cardiovascular system you know and all of a sudden 30 years ago this new system was found in our bodies which actually you know we've had since you know, we were sea creatures, if you like, you know, it's it's prevalent in, in sea urchins, it's prevalent in fish, you know, so it's something that's evolved, not something that's just appeared in our in our in ourselves. What is it for? What do we need it for this system? So this is the real key part. And this is the bit I get really excited about, because you know, it really, to me is the missing link, because it underpins the balance in our bodies. So we have this sort of kind of balance that we need to achieve. We need, you know, good blood pressure. We need good body temperature. We need appetite regulation. We need to have what we call circadian rhythm. So this is all to do with sleep, our sleep-wake cycle. Our hormones need balance through the day. You know, our stress hormone cortisol, our estrogen, you know. So basically the body is constantly trying to remain in this balanced state. And actually the endocannabinoid system is involved in all of those areas of balance. Balance. So it underpins sleep, it underpins pain and inflammation, it underpins our hormone levels, our appetite, our muscle function, our, you know, it, so it really is absolutely key. And so again, that's why I think, you know, addressing the endocannabinoid system as part of a program, you know, be it hormonal health or um, psychological health or gut function or whatever it is, we need to be thinking about the endocannabinoid system as much as we think about you know, the brain, the heart, the gut, uh, and all the other systems. Pre-CBD, just, just yeah. going back a little bit. <laughs> How, how did we support that system before? You know, actually, there's me talking about this brand new system and you're all thinking, oh, goodness, you know, what can I do? But you've been doing things all along to, to help support the endocannabinoid system, I hope. Um, so our body produces its own endocannabinoids. So it, it produces something that has a sort of a, a similar look, if you like, to CBD. Um, and I, I'm just going to say the name because it's actually the Sanskrit word for bliss, which I love. So it's called anandamide is one of our endocannabinoids. Oh. But I just think that shows how many, again, millennia that we've known about, you know, that this system in the body, if we're using Sanskrit words to, to describe this. So, so our body has its own, you know, sort of mechanisms for, for balance. Yes. 
this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, some of the ways that we can do this is by um, you know, the, what we have in our diets. Um, that, that's a very big one. So um, oily fish and, and what we call essential fatty acids that we find in oily fish that we can find in certain nuts and seeds. These are the precursors, the building blocks of our body's own endocannabinoids, the, the own chemicals that can activate and balance the system. So, you know, what we're eating in our diet is very important. And this is the best one, which I love. And actually, dark chocolate as well <laughs> contains, I know, <laughs> contains anandamide. So there are certain foods that we can eat that actually contain the body's own chemicals that balance the, 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 the endocannabinoid system. So dark chocolate's a good one. Echinacea, maybe we take that, you know, especially at this time of year, you know, take the herb echinacea to help us with um, our immune system and our immune health. That also contains anandamide. So again, you know, what we're eating, what we're drinking, you know, can, can help balance the endocannabinoid system and also how you know we manage stress um, you know stress is a big impact on the endocannabinoid system uh, and research really shows that that it, it reduces the function of the endocannabinoid system so again the more that we can do with our lifestyles with our health to manage stress that is also providing the balance within the endocannabinoid system as well so so what is cbd because that is going to help us support our endocannabinoid system isn't it so can you just explain it because it's quite confusing for the person that's just come across this for the first time and they don't really know you know, what is, what is it and what kinds do we need to be focused on? So CBD is short for cannabidiol. And um, this is a, a cannabinoid that's found inside the hemp plant. Now, I know I've mentioned the word cannabis, and of course, that raises a lot of issues in people's mind. Um, but you can be rest assured that um, CBD is legal. It's THC, the tetrahydrocannabinoid, cannabidol the other cannabinoid that I was just talking about that has the, the mind effects the psychoactive effects because CBD when it's extracted from hemp and, and is in a quality product and there is less than 2 point sorry 0.2 percent THC detectable in the oil then that product is legal as a food supplement I've been taking CBD for the last well almost two years now and you know my sleep has massively improved in terms of its quality and then of course the knock-on effect and I've been taking that continuously what other apart from sleep what other symptoms would it help with yeah I think you know that there's several really big areas first of all there's sleep and the studies are really beginning to show that it improves sleep stability so mm -hmm. it's not a sedative and that's really key because some people take it during the day to improve their mood it just helps you know when you're in the sleep state so it, it can just really help you naturally fall asleep and, and stay in a, a good quality sleep. It's also really important for mood um, as well. It just helps calm you down, um, just helps you know, relieve sort of anxious, hyper feelings. The other main area is pain and pain management. And you know, it's really important in reducing inflammation in the body. So you know, that's inflammation from you know, everything from sort of gut health, joint pain, back pain, migraine, helping to reduce cramping and, and period pains uh, as well. So you know, it's a, you know, those are what I would say are the three really key areas. Sounds too good to be true almost, doesn't I, it? I know, I know. And, you know, this is where I want to put the caveat because I, I get so excited talking about CBD and cannabinoids. But, you know, this is still part of a programme. It's, you know, it's not one wonder product um, that's out there. You know, there's no doubt I've seen some pretty dramatic changes for people or indeed just some, you know, really good steady changes when it's been included into programmes. But you still need to do the groundwork as well. <laughs> you know, I'm so the glad industry. you've said that because there's not there's nothing that's like this a magic pill or anything one thing that works just on its own you have to have a, a whole the whole thing going exactly. on exactly but so what do we look for if we're new to this and we go into the supplement market and online there's hundreds and hundreds of different things that we could we could go to what how do we choose yeah, absolutely. It can be a real minefield. Um, so what I would always recommend is um, look for certification on a practical basis as well. As I say, the best route is under the tongue. Um, so you can either get drops or mouth sprays um, and you want to start low, go slow. So I would always, you know, start with maybe what we products contain um, CBD per milligram. So, you know, a 500 milligram or a thousand milligram product. So that means how much CBD is in the total bottle. Right. Um, and then yes, you're taking one or two mouth sprays or one or two drops under the tongue. So that only really equates to around about a couple of milligrams, two milligrams of CBD daily. So again, it seems quite a low amount, 
but you know you're building up um where can we find out more about you absolutely so it would be wonderful if you want to to join me um i'm on instagram at dr elizabeth phillips linkedin and twitter as well at dr phillips thank you so much elizabeth it's been fascinating and uh, good luck with everything thanks for coming in thank you nikki it's been brilliant chatting with you thanks <laughs>